from NVIDIA Research and Stanford University, application of light field displays to vision correction and accommodation, and our presenter is Fu Chung Huang. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the introduction. So um, a couple of years ago, my colleague Gordon uh, with time uh, built a multi uh, auto stereoscopic uh, multi view display that enable uh, glasses free uh, 3D experience. It is essentially just a live view display so that people sitting at different location in the living room, they can perceive a slightly different uh, 3D content. I mean, this sounds uh, very exciting and very cool, but today I'm going to show you two applications that also use live field display, but go beyond just an entertainment system. So the first application is a vision correction. So imagine you are nearsighted, and when the display is shown outside your focal range, and everything just appears blurred, right? And in this work, we build a vision correcting display so that the uh, observer don't need to wear eyeglasses and we didn't do any correction to, to the eye. We do all the correction on the display side so that you can see, uh, the observer can see the face of the bunny or the background tree in sharp focus as opposed to without any correction. And the construction of this live view display is pretty simple. It is basically just uh, a parallax barrier based live view display uh, using a printed uh, pinhole array mask. So the construction is pretty thin. The add-on is just a few millimeter thick to the uh, iPhone or iPod touch. And it has many applications like help people uh, doing better in reading, uh, look at the watch or cell phone better, or even in driving when you are uh, focused really far away. Um, you couldn't focus on your dashboards. Uh, it's pretty hard or slow, and we can help with that. So uh, we think this, this uh, vision correcting uh, capability is going to uh, uh, change people's experience for future display. So the other application I want to talk about is a live field VR head-mounted display. So on the traditional head-mount uh, display, there's only one single uh, display plane. So although the image looks sharp, but it is a little bit flat. And on the right hand side, you can see our live field display can provide a proper uh, depth of field so you can focus on anywhere in the, in the 3D scene. But most importantly, uh, on the traditional hand mounted display, uh, there's a common problem called avergence and accommodation conflict, which cause all kinds of discomfort, eye strain, and nausea. And we, our live field VR hand mount can also solve the problem. So our construction is also pretty simple. Uh, in addition to the traditional hand-mounted display components like the backlight, the LCD panel, or the magnifying lens, we only add a second LCD panel and a very thin spacer, and we leave the rest to the computation. So this is the experience you're going to get with this uh, live field head mount. So you can focus, on the fo focus onto the foreground and leaving everything else out of focus or you can focus onto the background and leaving the foreground out of focus. Actually, we can provide uh, a continuous uh, focus in the 3D space without any eye tracking device or without any uh, render depth of field. Everything is done with your own eye. So um, with this uh, said, uh, the aforementioned two applications are also appear in, in the two uh, prior publications. So if you're interested, please go take a look of the two paper. So back to the vision correcting display uh, problem. Um, so we all know that the, the visual aberration affects the quality of life, and it is estimated about like 25% of the people in the US are farsighted. And since the ability to accommodate will decrease over time, at the age of 40, the number of people having uh, presbyopia is about 43%, but the number will increase to almost 70% at the age of 80s. And this is an inevitable aging process everyone has to face, that eventually we all need to uh, wear a pair of reading eyeglasses. And in the meantime, a recent study also shows that myopia in the United States has increased to 41%, which is so pretty high. But the number in certain Asian countries has approached to a crazy 60 to 90%. I mean, although these conditions can be solved with just wearing eyeglasses, there are also certain people having higher order abrasions that the blur they perceived are irregular, and this is a very difficult to correct. So maybe we need a new solution. 
So in this work, uh, we build a, a live field. We use a live field display to correct the vision problem. So basically, we could design the, both the hardware and the algorithm so that when showing the, the pre-filtered live field content on the uh, upper right corner, uh, the upper server can actually perceive a sharp image on the bottom row. So uh, before I jump into how I actually made this happen, let me just briefly ov uh, overview, do some overview of the, how we get uh, the image formation. So uh, a display can emit a bunch of light rays, which is basically just the light field, and it gets a series of uh, free space traveling or propagation to, the, to our eye and being refracted by the lens and travel another distance within our eyeball. And the final retinal image can be obtained by integrating along the angular dimension. So this is a very simple uh, image formation modeling of the light field projection. So for the focus case, a uh, retinal light field is actually sheared. So uh, the, re uh, the retinal integration actually becomes a convolution. And solving the vision correction problem is equivalent to solve a EO post deconvolution problem, and which is pretty hard, right? So using a, a, life, a true live view display will allow us to control the angular variations, which give us more degrees of freedom to, to solve the problem. So again, we can solve, we can formulate a linear uh, system, and the target, the goal is to solve for the target uh, display live field LD, such that after the projection or propagation uh, process, which we modeled using a projection matrix P, will give you the target retinal image I which should be sharp, right? And since we can formulate the, the system using uh, linear equations, it is pretty straightforward to solve. We just move the projection matrix to the right-hand side and do an inverse, and we can solve it, right? It sounds very simple, but actually, uh, because this is a, a deconvolution problem, it is a little bit uh, ill posed. So we need to look into the structure of the projection matrix to figure out how can we solve it better. And the key insight we found in, in this problem is that we need at least two views entering the pupil at the same time in, in one dimension. So which means we need a pretty dense light field instead of sparse light field. So you need at least two view in one direction, so mean you need four views simultaneously entering the pupil. Okay, so we built a, a, a experiment to simul, uh, simulate a hyperopic eye. So here is the camera, uh, it's a focus plane, it's further away from the display. So on the right hand side, you can see the battery looks pretty blurred out, but the content on the, uh, on the display is pretty sharp. It has preserved a lot more higher frequencies. And the construction is also pretty simple. All we need to do is put uh, a pre-filtered or pre-distorted live field content on, the, on a cell phone. And because the, the display is out of focus, everything just looks very blurred out. But as soon as we put the, the printed pinhole mask on the, the cell phone, make it a live field display, uh, we can correct the vision pretty well. So we also compared to some other prior work. Uh, basically, the, the prior work require a pretty high angular resolution to allow for better vision correction. And uh, with the design of both hardware and algorithm, we can solve the problem much better. So we believe that uh, providing this capability to future display is going to enhance the, the uh, user's experience much better. So this is the, the, the vision correction application. The second application I want to talk about is a live field VR handout. And here's a very short story I want to tell you that uh, we all know that depth of field is a, a very powerful tool for us to tell story in photography or in movie. But actually, it is also uh, equally important for the eye to tell the difference in depth, even just so for a single eye. So you can look at this way, and uh, you can tell the difference that you are looking at the front thumb or the rear thumb. Right? So this important focus cue is missing in the current generation uh, VR hand mount. So I'm going to show you how we enable this for a better, uh, more comfortable visual experience. So if you look at the current generation VR hand mount, they are already pretty good. They has a very high resolution and a very fast tracking, ultra low latency and low motion blur. And beyond just gaming, you can also try to immerse yourself in a real world event or place you have never been to, or you can uh, do 
do a, a, a virtual conference or help people treating post-traumatic stress disorder or even like a medical training or remote surgery like the Da Vinci project, the doctor can spend hours doing the remote operations and you really want them to be comfortable with, with the device, right? I mean, all these applications sounds very exciting, but there is still a catch that this, this is a safety warning from one of the recent VR device. Uh, I guess probably no one actually read those labels, but uh, there are many, uh, the, the, there are many uh, causes for this, this uh, discomfort, but some of them are actually related to virgins and accommodation conflict, right? The eye strain, double vision, nausea, fatigue. So what is the, wh why do we have the virgins accommodation conflict uh, in this VR handmount? So in real world, when we are looking at an object, our eye first focus at some distance, which is called the accommodation. The second thing our eye does is it will uh, rotate or verge uh, to, uh, toward each other so that the two retinal image will match up. Uh, so in, naturally, the virgins and accommodation are always coupled together. So when things move closer, we uh, focus a little bit harder and we verge a little bit more. So the two cues are still coupled together. So in a VR head mount, we show two tiny objects on the panel in front of the eye so that after the magnification, the object appear to be at the right spot. When the things move further away, uh, we increase the separation or the disparities so that our eye can rotate away or verge away from each other. But since our eye is still focused at the original depths, uh, uh, and uh, we decouple the virgins from the accommodation queue, and since our brain is so used to such coupling, uh, we, the artificial separation can lead to all kinds of discomfort and other problems. But why do we even care about the problem, right? So here's a, here's a study showing the importance of different depth cues at different depths. So when things are really far away, we use aerial perspective or relative height to uh, determine the distance. When things get closer, we use motion parallax and a stereopsis to uh, discriminate the difference in depths. When things get really close, uh, the accommodation uh, becomes the prominent cues for us to, to determine the, the true distance. So uh, if we can solve, and actually this, this dis personal distance is the space we use our hand to play with object. So if we can solve the virgins and accommodation conflict, uh, we can enable a more comfortable and a useful interaction for future VR. And this is our solution. It's pretty simple. Like I said earlier, we just use uh, add a second LCD panel and a very thin spacer. Actually, this we post all the instruction online, and this is a DIY project. So you can you can you can have your student or yourself play with this thing. And we have all the parts on. You can buy all the parts on eBay, and it's pretty cheap. So um, we use this part to build a multi-layer uh, based, uh, a modulation based uh, live field display. So you can actually focus into this 3D space that uh, your eye uh, can move, uh, focus anywhere within. Um, so the next question is, what content do we need to generate to show on the two LCD panel that enable this kind of experience? Right, the first step is to get a, a 4D live field. It's basically just an array of image and we render the same 3D scene from slightly different perspective. The parallax is very small, just over your pupil, but uh, uh, good enough for your eye to actually focus uh, in this 3D space. So with multiplicative two layers modulation, we can define each light ray uh, being a multiplication of the two pixels on the two panels. So we can define each view uh, being a set of rays entering the uh, eye at a specific location for example, this is a, the central view, and this is a rightmost view. So a complete description of the light field can be represented using a multiplication of the two panel, and this allows for an, an inverse optimization problem we know how to solve uh, efficiently. So I don't want to uh, dive into the mathematical details, but the point is that we can solve the problem uh, efficiently in real time on GPU using CUDA, okay? So, um, this is the output from the, the solver. So one thing you can notice is that uh, the objects are mostly uh, assigned to its closest uh, uh, LCD panel in physical space. 
But for objects in between the two LCD panels, they are uh, distri distributed to both LCD panels with some strange high frequency patterns that allow your eye not just to focus on the two physical panel, but also onto object in between the panel and still get a reasonable focus there. Okay, so uh, we built this uh, prototype uh, in collaboration between uh, uh, NVIDIA and uh, Stanford University, and we also bring the, we'll bring the prototype tomorrow afternoon for the demo session. So if you're interested, please come to the demo. Uh, here's the photograph result from this uh, VR handmount. So on the left hand side, you can see the traditional handmount, the, the image looks pretty flat, although it is sharp. Uh, on the right hand side, the VR handmount, you can actually focus on the foreground, leaving the background out of focus, or you can focus onto the background and the foreground out of focus. On the other hand, on the traditional handmount, because when you're looking into the background, your eye rotate away and reduce the accommodation. So the image looks a little bit blurred and this is actually uncomfortable to look at. And another example is that in this 3D scene, there are a lot of high frequencies. So it's actually very hard to uh, focus anywhere in this 3D scene. And with the live field VR handout, we can have a nice defocus blur on the uh, for you to look in the foreground or background. And finally, like I said, uh, Enable hand manipulating with object is important for future VR interaction. And you can focus on the right hand in the foreground or left hand in the background without problem. And beyond just uh, CG rendered uh, 3D scene, we can also capture a real world uh, uh, events or place using a light life field camera. We use a translational stage to capture both the left eye and the right eye and plug into our solver. And you can actually focus in a, a, vert, uh, a 3D world uh, just like, uh, just like you do naturally. And I want to point out again that we don't have any eye tracking or we didn't render a depth of field. Everything is done with your own eye. So um, beyond uh, what we have done currently, I think the live field content pipeline is still in its early stage right now. Unfortunately, there are many companies start to capture a live field like a Google, the John VR or a Lytro. They are building new camera system, capture system. And also I think a better understanding of human visual system and human perception can help us uh, to do better in enhancing uh, uh, people's experience. So um, this is the end of my talk and that we will bring the demo tomorrow if you are interested. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. <laughs>